atonement is a big one for you. Yeah. I know that. So unpack that. Why Which gets to any of my favorite worship song. Oh yeah. Which is what? <laughs> the one the one that pops to mind first when you said what lyrics do you disagree with? Defender by Bethel, right? Mm, probably Bethel. most likely. Upper room. Upper room. Upper oh, room. I can't handle Thank that you. song. Real Dude, time. You can't this either. This is how I fight my battles. No, 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 no. Nope, that's not the one. Oh, it's, we can get into that it's one. It's better than that one. Which one is it? Sing it. Let's go. Uh, it, it's the first verse. Is it's really the first verse? I mean, it's 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 very self focused, and some of that, some of the individual worship lyrics rub me the wrong way. But what rubs me the wrong way is like you went you went out and b- brought the head of my enemy back to me. And all I did was worship. All I did was bow down. Something like it that. Literally in the first verse says, you bring me the head of my enemy. Can you, if you can sing it, I can probably that adjust is, it. That is the song. Yeah. I'm not a Bethel fan, by the way, but, uh, Dude, it is, it's the first time I heard it. I was what's sit- it called defender. It's, it's called fight my battles. It's called defender. No, it's, fight it's my not, ba- no, it's not fight my battles. It's called defender. Fight well, my battles is a different one. It was called defender. The song is called defender. And that's the opening line. And the chorus is, and all I did was worship, and all I did was bow down. There's a couple of those things, too, that I have problems with. But it's mainly the Game of Thrones imagery that happens with this, like, I literally call it Game of Thrones worship whenever it comes on. And I'm like, dude, this is, it's unnecessary. It it is, I I get what they were trying to do. I understand, like, the connection that they're trying to draw. Go ahead, read. Sorry. Are you finding it? Read that first line. It carries fine in it right yeah. now. Yeah, I know this song. Yeah. yeah, dude. And when I heard it, I feel like both Zach and I were sitting out in the congregation. What the what? You lost me. You knew where I left me. You entered me. To- yeah, I can't. Sorry. Well, it and it's <laughs> and, just email, and the, what's Gamboa. weird is like the even the rest of the song is this like weird kind of sort of tender. Just uh, I was lost and you helped find yeah, me can't. and you redeemed me. Like you pulled me out of this, but but that line stuck out so bad. I'm like, dude. It's that's that song is so bad. That line is so bad. I would be embarrassed if I brought someone to church and they heard that because I'm like, I need to now I, I'm doing damage control after the service. Like, yeah, hey, sorry. I hope you didn't pay too yeah. close attention there because we're not really about uh, chopping people's heads off. I promise. I, I want to go on the it. record for the listeners and viewers. I am not a Bethel fan, nor do I align with them theologically. So I just want for the listener and viewers to know that's where I'm at. I don't do you guys do what you want to do. No, it's fair. Uh, um, He's a Hillsong audio, guy. Audio Hillsong. wise. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Nate. Uh, mustache uh, man. Audio wise, they have moved the ball so far forward sure. for worship. And I love that. Yes. The, theologically, they're there's jacked a up. A lot of questions. But we're not answering and, the question well, that no, I asked. There, but there's a good example of, of uh, a, a church, a, a school that's on fire that you're like, I don't, this is great, but it's like, I need to point out the negatives here instead of the positives. Also so, answer the question. <laughs> so that's, that's a big rub. Like if uh, t- the reason, so I think that's a good example of there are multiple atonement theories that all have biblical evidence so the God killed Jesus motif to satisfy, he needed the perfect sacrifice to satisfy his perfect love, apparently, through justice and wrath. Um, there's also ransom theory. There's language of God, Jesus giving himself as a ransom, ostensibly to the, some people think, to Satan, like here, here's a ransom to himself, to God. Like, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's, um, streams of universal reconciliation through Jesus. All these things have evidence biblically. And there is evidence throughout early church fathers that held all those different views. And I say that just to mention that, like, there isn't one perfect narrative about what God was doing in the Bible. Um, there's a lot of, there's, there's variations. So that's part of the, that's one of the reasons why I've been more interested in the Bible after, and as I 
I feel like I'm in a perpetual deconstruction where I'm, I, I always want to be testing things, but I feel like I've, I'm more interested in, in it now than I was when I was, quote, in the on fire stage. And one more thing, because we brought up Defender, a, a good way of distilling it down in a simple way is where I'm at with what Jesus was doing on the cross was I think God was cha- trying to change. God didn't change after after Jesus died and rose. It was cha- he was changing people's perspective on what God was like. And so it's not, we didn't, we don't change God or Jesus didn't change God by allowing him to be killed. He revealed what God is like. I'm more comfortable with that than the other. Can I ask some specific questions? Am I allowed to or no? Is this your podcast? (laughs) Yeah, go for it. I'm a guest. I'm a guest. Do it. We will allow it. Yes. Okay. I want to Do you believe that Jesus was the manifestation of God made flesh? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. I believe that Jesus reveals who God is. So you believe that God sent his son, Jesus, to the earth to be both God and man? More or less. I wasn't there, but yes, I believe. I don't know that. That's okay. okay. But I feel like, okay, so the reason I say that, I feel like a lot of people- I like, I like empirical yes or no, and I, lo- I know your personality, I know. and I know you I like- know. I always leave it out. I want to leave it out. I know, I know, and I appreciate that, but I feel like your (laughs) listeners need this because this is why, okay, so so pause. This is why I, I recommend people to listen to this podcast because even though there are things- Are we on this camera right now? Which one are we on? Are we on this one? Look right this one? there. Even though- No, that one is going to be Jeff. Which one are you on? That's going to be, be Jeff that's, and Carrie. That's okay. Jeff and Carrie. Is this one right here? No, dude. This one? Oh, this one. one. Look right into there. So even though I don't agree <laughs> wholeheartedly with everything that is said here, I recommend people to listen to this because I want them to have the conversation because it would be foolish to think- you have to dogmatically believe something without actually having wrestled through the ideas. So that's why I'm asking the questions. And I think your listeners need to know that. So, so my first question is, am I allowed to do this? Am I, yeah, not? do it, man. Yeah. Okay. So do my, you, oh, do my. you, you, do you believe that God sent Jesus as a manifestation of, of himself, both God and human to the earth, yes or no? Amen. I think you answered this. Yeah. Okay. So then, do I just you? Said I believe it. I don't know it. Okay, that's fair. That's and fair. I, I used to confuse the two. That's why I say that, and that's it's very fair. important for me to clarify that. Also, because I think there's a lot of there's a lot of Christians that when they lose their faith, it's because they think it's like they think faith equals certainty, and I think some people can feel very certain fair. in their faith. But it's not the same no, thing. No, that's what I love about you is I think you're absolutely right because if you think certainty equals faith, you're screwed because nowhere in life do we have certainty ever, ever. Okay, so my second question is, do you believe that Jesus is the propitiation for our sin that he died for the reconciliation of the sins of humanity? That's a yes or no question. Maybe. Will you let me explain if I say no? Yes, it's your podcast. (laughs) I'm asking, okay, so no, okay. It's your podcast. I'm just asking the question. Well, the court reporter read back, he said no. Okay. Well, it it depends on what you mean by that. I, I, I believe that. I believe that God forgives and forgiveness as as a father in my best moments when my kids make mistakes, they're forgiven before they ask. And I think God is better than me. So I know that's not biblical, but I think you can find you can find glimpses of that throughout scripture. No, that is biblical that God is better than you. Oh yeah, for sure. But I I do think is it better for me to <clears throat> if I forgive my kids, if if I wait till my kids ask and I believe they're actually sorry to forgive them, what does that say about me? And I think a lot of Christians believe that God will not for doesn't forgive anybody until they come to a proper belief in him. And I, I think that falls apart the more you poke at that bear. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say, am I allowed? 
I don't, I'm not trying to take over this. No, it's good. So. These guys can jump in anytime. Zach's too. head is so big, I can't see anybody over there. We're here to have all. a conversation so with our guests. I, 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 I love feel, that you have I questions. I feel intimidated by the beauty of these men that I'm with right now. So what I heard you haven't you seen say, my hairy back. I'm continue. I can shave it for you if you want me to. Later, we'll put you guys together, and you won't come apart. Andy's think, face was fantastic. I think Nate has a thing that you can use. I have a back shaver. Yeah. Yeah. Shears. He's got the it's pretty yeah. awesome shears. I'm I'm sorry, we I do. Took I do have a back shaver. It's pretty awesome. I'm sorry, we took a right In turn. In the shower, no, continue. Fantastic. Okay, so, and this is why I I, I don't. I hope this is okay, uh, but. Don't do that anymore. Continue. Okay, deal. Jeff, shut the half up. Shut but up. But anyways, okay. So yeah. to say that it what I heard does that's, that's not what, what may, doesn't mean what you mean, but what I heard was then God's forgiveness for us is really dependent upon his feelings towards us rather than our choices towards him and repentance. Is that what you were saying, or did I miss that? Some some version of that, I think. Unless you're setting a trap for me, and then I can change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not setting a trap. I promise you. I'm trying to to. So so can I fire yeah, a question? Can we, back bro- at you? Well, can we broaden this beyond the? I love the um, bromance that's Go happening right now. But like, let's. We, a few of us, I think, can also chime in on it too. Because one of the things that we've talked about in this is is where where does forgiveness happen and where and and where do we encounter forgiveness? And I think what you were kind of alluding to, Zach, is that from God's perspective, forgiveness has been extended already. It is in place, and it is up to us as humans to step into and accept forgiveness. Yeah, Paul, piggybacking on Paul, and I can't name the verse. God was in Christ reconciling us to him, not reconciling mm-hmm. himself to us. So so the so the idea comes that that if it, it aligns with your description of being a father, I have already forgiven you. Now, it's up to you as my kid to accept that forgiveness and and what that means in your life. That's where the reconciliation happens. Yeah. Is now, when it's two parties. But if you don't, yeah, right. So if you don't accept it, then reconciliation doesn't happen. You don't enjoy the fruits of forgiveness, so to speak, right? Yeah, and it, but it will always be God willing it, from like for with extending my kid analogy, it will always be uh, if they feel guilty and feel separation, I pray that it's never because of of my yeah. disposition towards them. It's just because they aren't, they still feel shame on their own accord, but it's not because of me, you know? Okay. That, that sounds, I, I don't think it's what you're saying, but it sounds passive. So uh, what I'm hearing is God's grace and forgiveness is enough and there doesn't need to be a conscious decision of choosing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and repentance that follows that. So that's what I'm trying to ask. And I'm I'm not accusing you of saying that, but it sounds passive like, well, if my kids know that I love them, then they're okay. Am I missing that? And again, I'm not saying you're saying that. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. I think so, but if this is leading towards like, is there like a need to have a salvation moment um, or to to get saved, as it were? I feel like this is where it's going. Like for well, sure, we've had this conversation. So before. it is a trap. We've had, I'm no, not you. trying to trap you. <laughs> no. no, I'm not trying to trap. We've had this conversation no. many times before regarding like. When you're a little baby and you never got the opportunity, like, oh, well, you didn't have that moment, so are you saved or not? Like, we've had that over the years multiple times. And so I, that's where, Zach, you always seem to rest in, like, nope, if he, he's saving everyone. He's created and he's saving. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm like a universe. I, I, I don't want to say, hey, I'm I'm a universalist and that's the way it is, but I lean towards like the idea of God's grace being limited to my experience or to the experience of somebody born into sex slavery. So if that if that person 
doesn't come to a saving faith according to the classic kind of Romans road model of learning that they're a sinner, they need salvation, and so repent. Um, the idea of grace, God's grace being limited to, to each individual's experience makes God's grace small. And that's kind of where I'm at. And I also believe that there's a, if you read I don't Paul, agree. Yeah. And I, I don't, I don't, uh, it's not surprising. Zach doesn't agree but no, with no, himself. But, keep going. I, just, but I, don't say I, I think, I think there's some, there's some things in, in Paul, where he talks about working out your salvation. There's this, there's this process. So. I worked out today. Yep. <laughs> Zach, it, it's part of it. Zach, you're you're as you're Carrie, saving your body. As Carrie said, you're <laughs> your kind of passive hold everything in tension always leads to an well, I don't know. I, I, well, I don't know behind that door. I don't know behind that door. Yes, yes, Jesus and I do, God and I definitely